It is a privilege to have on the summit with me today, Coach Kelsey Herber from Huntington. Her Foresters are 13 and 9 on the year, 4 and 7 in league play in the Crossroads League. Coach, there is so much that I want to talk about with you today, but let's start with volleyball as you are the head coach for the Foresters, been there and now in your fifth season in the head coach position. Talk about where you are right now. We're in the home stretch of the season, a really good non conference schedule, and then uh, getting in a very tough crossroads. Roads League. So it's been up and down right there. Talk about the year. Absolutely. Well, I think with there being a lot to talk about, volleyball is a great place to start because I love talking volleyball. And, and you're absolutely right. We played a good non-conference schedule, started the year really strong on this high note, hit a little bit of a rough patch, um, but then we got back on track and I'm really excited for what's to come moving forward. You hit the nail on the head that we play in a very tough conference. I may be biased, but as far as NAIA women's volleyball goes, I think the Crossroads League is one of the best. And so you have to be prepared for whatever team you're up against because any team can be any team on any given night. You're going to have multiple schools that are ranked top 25 in the nation. You're going to have other teams in your conference receiving votes, and it's going to be tough. And I think that's what makes it so fun. I wouldn't want to be in any other conference because I love how competitive it is. And so, like I said, you know, we hit that rough patch, but we got back on track. And the beauty of how our conference play works is you get everybody twice. And so those matches that we let slip through our fingers that first time around, we now have a beautiful opportunity to go get them the second time around. And our team is very motivated to do so. And so I'm looking forward to the rest of this year's play. I appreciate your assessments of the league. And by the way, you can be biased. It's all right. It's totally Thank fine. You. you couldn't be biased about the good. league. It's a good league. Uh, among the, the leaders on your team, Haley Cruz is one of those leaders. I know you've had a chance to see her play for a number of years prior to even her time there with Huntington. But she's doing well now in her sophomore season. Better yes. than three kills per set. Uh, just under three digs per set. Talk about her play. Absolutely. So a little fun fact I'll start with. Um, she is my younger sister and she um, started the recruiting process, obviously, several years ago. And throughout that time, in that time period, I became the head coach. And so we started to have conversations about what could this look like? What could it look like for me as your sister to be your coach? You know, and and it's something I had to process through, too, because I've heard plenty of times a parent coaching a child, um, but, you know, a sibling coaching a sibling, that's a little different. It's unique. And I had the opportunity to coach her even when she was just getting started in her volleyball career. So I'd coach her before in club volleyball. And so we had some of that experience, um, but it's been really neat to do that together as sisters. And so I wanted to start by sharing that fun fact. Um, but she's done a great job for us, and, and I'm really proud of her for that. Being a six-rotation outside hitter for us, she never leaves the floor. And so in terms of the offensive weapon that she is, you know, she can hit a really heavy ball, um, and she can be crafty with her shots and sees the floor well and has had some really good fundamental training before she got to this level that I think has really prepared her. And it's nice to have that offensive weapon all the way around, you know, so we can set her in the back row as well. Um, but she's a very quick player. Um, she's smaller, but she jumps well and she's fast. And so what she lacks in height, she makes up for in speed and being explosive and being a fundamentally sound player who also just is a competitor who wants to win. The other day, I asked every player on our team, tell me the one team you want to beat the most the rest of this season. And, and it wasn't a trick question. I really just wanted to know what team each person wanted to beat the most. And I even answered and, and picked a team. Um, well, we got to Haley and she said, all of them, because I think we can beat anybody. I said, I love that. <laughs> and I'm still going to make you pick one. And she said, well, then whoever's next. Um, so she's a competitor and she's done a really good job for us. So I'm proud of her. 
I was really thinking you were going to give us bulletin board material right there with, with that particular statement, if we were going to see who, but uh, you, you did well. You navigated that very, very well. Uh, well, he's probably been set up very well also because you have a great setter on your team. Morgan Robrock, who is uh, putting up stats of better than nine and a half assists per set. And one of the things that I've noticed about her is that she – could at any point in time, it looks like, uh, drop a triple-double. I mean, she yes. seems to be the complete player. Talk about her play for you this year. Yes, and again, you hit the nail on the head. She is the complete package as a setter. She's the type of setter you want on your team. And it's because she is so fundamentally sound in multiple areas. I think setters, unfortunately, sometimes get this reputation for not being good defenders. That is not the case with Morgan Robrock. Um, she is one of our best defenders, in fact, and does a fantastic job of that. Um, I would argue that she is also one of our top blockers. And in the midst of everything we ask her to do each match, run the offense, go play defense, go be offensive in the front row and go get kills yourself. We also ask of her, hey, sometimes I'm going to line you up against the other team's best hitter and I need you to shut her down with your blocking. As if we haven't already asked you to do enough, I'm going to also give you this special assignment. And she is someone who just embraces that and says, okay, um, that's what I'm going to go do then. And she does a fantastic job of that. And watching her grow as a player over the course of, you know, now she's a senior, so I've had the honor and privilege of coaching her for four years to see how she has also grown in how she leads the floor and how she, her decision-making and how that's developed and how she takes charge when needed, you know, in the hard moments. Um, that is something that has warmed my heart to see as a coach, because it's something I know she's intentionally worked on and grown in. Um, so I could say countless things about the value that she brings to our team as a player. And there's so much she brings as a leader and a teammate um, that not maybe everybody gets to see, but I'm so honored that I've had a front row seat to it. We're visiting today with Coach Kelby Herber from Huntington here on Midwest Sports Net on the Summit. And I encourage you, please continue to enjoy the videos here. We enjoy talking about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. Coach, as uh, you have been a player and an assistant coach as well at Huntington, you just spent much time there. It's a university with a mission that uh, simply talks about Christ, scholarship, and service. And I know that uh, as a um, not only a player, but as a student there, you got your degree in broadcast fusion media. I've seen you online in a lot of different places, whether it be online YouTube like this, or also you're on the radio as well. Talk about what you're doing outside of the realm of coaching with, with the, the media package. Absolutely. So like you said, my undergrad degree was in broadcast fusion media. I absolutely loved my experience as an undergrad student at Huntington. And it's a big reason why I tell people I never left. Um, I loved it so much here. I just decided to never leave. And so TV and radio and ministry, that is something I'm so passionate about. And so I'm always grateful when there's opportunities like this, you know, not only to utilize that skill set, but like I said, to really get to embrace a passion of mine. And so my dad, he had a TV show called The Restoration Road, and I had the privilege of kind of growing up on that, if you will. You know, from a young age, he would have me be a guest on his show, and then I just fell in love with it. And so we would always record episodes together, and doing ministry together is one of my favorite things to do with my dad, and I've been so grateful for that part of our relationship. Um, but then to also have the opportunity to record for the radio each week. Star 88.3 is a local Christian radio station in Fort Wayne, based out of Fort Wayne. And we get to record once a week with my good friend, Josh Rains. And we have a blast. Honestly, maybe too much fun, Joey. There are times where people who also work in that building will be like, I heard you guys laughing up there. And I'm like, yes, you know, because sometimes we have to reel it in. All right. What were, what were we trying to do? Um, but we have a blast. You know, it's just so much fun to do ministry, to participate in broadcasting, but to do that with people who are important in my life has been such a gift. So my team knows that about me. And so it's funny when 
some of the incoming freshmen first learn that. Um, the other day, actually, my team got to come to my husband and I's church because my son, who is now one and a half, he was getting dedicated at church. And I invited my team. And so I was going to have to go up on the stage. And one of my players said, coach, coach, are you nervous to go up there? <laughs> and I said, no, not at all. I said, you've got a coach that loves stage time. And so they know I love anything that involves a microphone um, or a screen or some stage time. So it's just a blast for me to do. So I've loved getting to do this with you today. Well, listen, I'm, I'm glad you're on here. And, and I thought about this too. I'm surprised this is episode number 249 of the summit. I don't know how we made it through 248 without having you on here prior to now, because <laughs> we can easily talk about sports and Jesus here for, for quite a while. And, and I, I, it's an easy yeah. transition now to the next question, because I want to ask you about the impact as a coach and you, you've led into it. Well, talking about having the team come be with you mm -hmm. when, you know, for something important, like the dedication of a child and yeah. to be a part of that. Talk about the impact then that, that you get to have not only, uh, to them as a team, but in a university like Huntington, where, you know, it's, it's part of the mission to get to share and, and, uh, and talk about faith. Absolutely. Well, being the head coach of Huntington University's volleyball program is one of my greatest passions, one of my greatest honors in life. And I think back to when I was coming to the university to basically be a part of an open gym, a tryout to see if I was going to be able to make the team. This is when I was a senior in high school. I get in the car after basketball practice. Uh, my dad's driving me to Huntington's campus. And Joey, I cried the whole way there uh, because I was so nervous. I was afraid I was going to be rusty. What if they don't want me to be a part of the team? whatever it may be. And, you know, my dad prayed for me and I felt a sense of peace. And, you know, I ended up going into that open gym and obviously being offered a position that completely changed my life. But sometimes I just think about if someone would have gone to that crying girl in the car that night and said, hey, I just want you to know not only are you going to get offered a spot on that team, but you're going to go lead that program someday too. Um, it makes me emotional to even talk about it because I don't know if I would have believed you in that moment, but gosh, am I so grateful for how God works and how he orchestrates and how he has those plans set for us when we don't know what they are. And so to now have the opportunity to lead a team that changed my life as an athlete, where I felt like I could be fully known and loved for being a person, not just a volleyball player, not just a student, to now be able to lead the program. And my biggest goal is seeking to help each of my players understand volleyball is something that we do. It's something we love. It's something we care about. Um, it's an act of worship. It's a ministry. There is eternal value. And I never want a player walking out of my program thinking volleyball is what defines them. Because if they do, I think I've missed the mark. Um, that is the most valuable piece of what I get to do is help them grow as people and grow a relationship with Christ and each other and with myself. Um, that is so important to me. And I'm a competitor. Don't get me wrong. You know, I want to step out there and I want to be anybody who's on the other side of the net. I just think we have to keep eternity in mind as coaches or at the end of the day, we just miss a really valuable opportunity to impact an athlete's life. I understand. I think that's well stated. I, I appreciate the way that you shared that. Coach, then to, to wrap up our time today, and I'm very thankful to have it. I know that the, a lot of things have uh, tried to get in the way over <laughs> days and weeks of us getting the, the time today. So I, yes. I think the, the best use of it, the season is wrapping down. And 2023, I, I'm sure it's gone by quickly for you and for your team. But uh, the program as a whole is a program that really is trending upward. Mm -hmm. and, and if you look just from statistically and, and you look at it to, from 10 years ago, even to where it is right now, it's a, it's a program that's trending upward. You're in the home stretch right now. You have a, a match against Marion tonight, a team that's receiving votes in, in the most recent NAI ranking, not rating. And uh, also then you're back at home uh, taking on St. Joseph of Calumet. Then you have four away matches in a row. Yes. So talk about the, the close to your season and the push to get into the, into the postseason. 
Absolutely. We have a great opportunity before us. You know, the reality is that we did not quite execute like we wanted to in the first round of conference. And I'll be transparent with that. And and I've been transparent with my players about that. You know, let's just own it. We did not quite execute in the way that we wanted to, that we thought we were going to. But our whole theme this season is next best step. So whether things went really well and we're on top of the world and we got a huge win, we've got to talk about what's our next best step moving forward. Well, it's the same if you didn't quite execute the way you wanted to and you had a tough match. Um, We have to ask ourselves, what's our next best step? So the reality is, yes, we did not execute in the way we wanted to in the first round. But we have to address as a team, what's our next best step moving forward? And I believe that is stepping onto the floor for practice or getting together with the team for a film session or whether it's meeting together for small group, whatever we do as a team, I've asked the girls to recognize that each of those things that we do as a team, it's part of the process. Any win you want moving forward does not start by waking up that day and saying, man, I want to beat Marion. That process to beating Marion actually started taking place long ago when we started this season and started meeting together and started practicing. It's all part of the process. And so what I would love to see the remainder of this season is for us to have a strong finish where we play with confidence, where we execute fundamentally the areas that we know we need to to compete with the best of the best and where we can focus on one next best step at a time. And we recognize that any time together is a part of the process. And I think if we finish strong this second half of conference play and finishing out the year that we can feel really good about what we accomplished, even in the midst of not executing in the way we wanted to earlier on, if that makes sense. So I'm looking forward to it. All right. Well, it, it gets underway. And that next step is, as you mentioned, you mentioned Marion. That's who you have tonight. Yes. So Huntington taking on Marion tonight as the season 2023 regular season starts to wrap up and then heading for Crossroads League play after that for sure in the postseason. And who knows what happens from that point. Coach Kel- Kelsey Herbert, thank you so much for taking time with us today here on the summit. You have an open invitation to come back. I uh, would love to get to visit with you more about, uh, again, volleyball your faith, talk about Jesus, talk about the players, the university, and just share about that a little bit more. But thank you for taking time with us today. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a blast.